Our story begins in the Middle Ages. Several monks gather somewhere to observe something we do not see. One of them says it looks like a murder. Another says it was her who caused it, without us knowing who he has in mind. They argue about what needs to be done. Soon enough, we see what they are looking at, a lifeless man lying on the floor. Then we see a young boy, who cautiously opens a door somewhere in the dark. When he gazes into the darkness, he gets several rapidly changing images. That seems to cause a man to wake up outside. Another huge man near him seems to understand what he went through. He quickly asks the man who woke up about his dream, and whether he entered the room. The man answers that he never does. He is Mateo, our protagonist, an inquisitor of the true dawn. Near a stream, he reads a letter sent to him by brother Felix. It says that a brother of Hedro Abbey has lost his life. So Felix requests an inquisitor, such as Mateo, to look into this matter right away. The abbot is convinced the crime was caused by witchcraft. He plans to execute the accused woman without the inquisition's approval. After Mateo reads the letter, we see his companion, the huge Johnny, praying for him, even though Mateo is a non-believer. Currently, they are two travelers, who have a great distance to traverse. Eventually, they arrive at the place the letter spoke of, Hedro Abbey. The duo is quickly met with some hostility from a woman, because they are inquisitors. She says that the accused woman must burn. She even demands that the action take place, or else the townspeople will do it. When they arrive at a certain tree, Johnny says they are too late, because someone is hanging from it. He adds that the people there are acting without proper authority. They then come to a gate, asking if anyone is there. Hostility starts forming around them, as some townsfolk inch toward the Inquisitors. Fortunately, the gate soon opens. A mask-wearing monk appears, for Mateo to inform him that he is of the true dawn. After saying that, they are allowed entrance. Mateo starts saying he received a letter from Brother Felix. He also says that burning heretics without a trial is punishable by law. The monk, who happens to be Felix, responds that he hoped the true dawn would have sent an experienced agent, because Mateo seems young to him. After the Inquisitor tells him to not let his appearance fool him, the monk removes his mask to reveal one bad eye. He fires back by telling Mateo the same. With the pleasantries out of the way, Mateo now wants to talk to the girl. So they traverse along a labyrinth, until they arrive at the cage where the girl is kept. Seeing the conditions in which she is being kept registers as cruel to Mateo, though Felix says it's beyond his authority. The Inquisitor tells the girl he is there to help her. He also asks if she has confessed. At that point, someone else enters to inform him that she hasn't yet. That man is the abbot. Mateo tells him the girl he is holding captive is young, to which the abbot responds that black magic is not limited by age. According to him, she has a pact with the devil and deserves to burn. Mateo replies that she doesn't deserve that, if she is innocent. He adds that some of her restraints are not necessary. Wanting his guest to believe in the guilt of the girl, the abbot wants him to give her a test. So Mateo places a cross inside the cage for her to look at. That prompts her to look straight at him with a strange smile. But he tells her to look at the cross instead. The devil cannot look at the holy cross, the abbot says. Yet Mateo says she will not be tortured further. After that, the abbot asks what he wants to accomplish. The girl neither has a home nor a family to return to, and they are doing God's work. Mateo's final words to him are that God would not torture innocents. Before leaving, the abbot contemptuously tells Mateo that he doesn't belong there. From that interaction, we learn that our protagonist is a man of justice. Or at least, he tries to be. Shortly after, Felix takes him to the place where the crime occurred. There, he shows him a dagger, which was found in the deceased man's hand. Mateo is curious to know if there were any signs of a struggle, like knocked over candles. There was nothing like that, says the monk. Then he takes the inquisitor to where the body lies. Mateo says he will inspect the body alone. As he does, he places a cloth over the man's wounds. They bleed through to form a certain symbol. So he calls Felix back inside, to ask if he wanted Mateo to come specifically. Supposedly, that symbol is something he is acquainted with. The monk wants to know what it is, but Mateo can't share the details with him. To the Inquisitor, everyone is suspicious until he discovers the truth. Later, Felix tells him that Francisco, the monk who lost his life, was part of the inner circle. Those members spend hours in the sanctum. Mateo wants access to it. Yet the monk tells him only inner circle members are allowed in there. He places the Inquisitors in their rooms afterward. While Mateo lies in bed, he is disturbed by loud sounds. We see it's a monk in another room engaging in penance. Despite that, our protagonist manages to sleep and has the dream of being a boy again. This time, he walks inside the room that he said he never got a chance to walk in. Meanwhile, the sleeping man has his head touched by grotesque hands. When somebody screams, Mateo wakes up. He lights a candle to see something move within his bed. Looking under the bed, however, reveals nothing. He hears whispers outside his room, which prompts him to search that area. Shortly after, he walks along the labyrinth with a torch. A presence sends him back at a certain point. Following that, he witnesses a shifting light, making him head that way. It brings him to the cage where the girl is being kept. She is sleeping, so he starts going to a nearby door. Upon coming close, he gets several images. It is the door he sees in his dreams. Attempting to open it proves to be unsuccessful. As he starts walking backward, his back hits the cage. At that moment, the girl startles him with her abrupt presence. Mateo asks her name. In addition to telling her there is no reason for her to fear him, though she stays silent, he then asks if she knows what it is. 
while holding the cloth with the bloodstain that resembles the symbol. She takes it from him. Her first words are that she is not the evil that torments that place. He wants to know what is. She doesn't tell him, so he asks where her family is. They are gone, she says. Matao asks if she knew the monk who lost his life. The girl says she knew the inner circle. Once he asks how, she just smiles. Many of his questions go unanswered. She soon throws his cloth out and approaches him, telling the man to help her. After that, she lies down to draw the same symbol as the one on the cloth. The next scene has him back in his room, where he also sketches several of those symbols. It seems like he is out of his mind. In the morning, Mateo comes to Johnny, sharing with his friend that he found the door from his dream. However, his information comes with the bad news that the door was locked. Afterward, they enter the eating area. As they eat, they get stared at by the monks with suspicion. In a short time, one of them notices the food is rotten. This instantly makes him think the girl spoiled the food before their eyes. Having said that, they all experience the same thing in their bowls. The monk vocalizes that she must be executed immediately. But the abbot, with a hint of annoyance in his voice, says they must allow Mateho to proceed with his investigation. Since the attention is on him, he uses it to ask where the grain is located. After Felix shows him, the Inquisitor slices the grain bag to reveal maggots have infested it. That makes him berate them all, by saying they allow fear to cloud their judgment. They end up seeing what they want to see. With his demonstration, Mateho embarrasses the monks. He finishes by saying such infestations are common, if food is not stored properly. Then we see an elderly monk working in his room. He hears the voice of a child coming from nearby. It causes him to start walking outside, saying this is no place for a youngster. When they are alone, Mateho tells Johnny they need to know what takes place in the sanctum. Outside, we observe the monks giving out food to the townsfolk. The elderly monk comes out to ask them if they saw a little girl anywhere. Soon Mateho comes out to ask them if they saw that monk, whose name is Teton. He asks because they saw him move in a hurry through the eating area. So he gets directed toward Teton's path. In the meantime, we see Teton trying to get to the young girl by climbing somewhere. As the monks who give out food talk to each other, a person suddenly falls near them, making a woman scream in shock. Soon enough, many people gather around the fallen man, who happens to be Teton. Mateho is closest to him, and perceives the man's blood has formed that special symbol, seeing it has a strong effect on the man. One townsman says the girl is still alive. He wants to know how many more must lose their lives until she gets burned. Mateho says that what happened was an accident. The mob, not wanting to listen to him, soon becomes hostile. They want to take his life too. Once they initiate their attack, the monks escape behind the gate. Mateho soon follows, along with Johnny. They come to the abbot to give him the news. Felix says Teton lost his life. Keeping the pressure on the poor girl, one of the monks says she is ending them one by one. The Inquisitor objects to such an accusation, making the point that there is no proof of that. He makes a further point by saying each suspicion will mount into a greater threat, so he urges they don't give in to paranoia. The abbot tells him his words are dangerous. Mateho replies that what's dangerous is what the rain did to the tower. While examining it, he found a loose board. He believes Teton's robe got tangled in the loose nail, making him fall. He then says that the way the dagger was found in Francisco's hand indicates he inflicted his When one of them asks why he would do that, a boy appears there to voice that Francisco was unhappy with the inner circle. That makes the abbot angry, who continues to insist Francisco was ended by the witch. He sternly adds they will not wait any longer, and will proceed to execute the girl at dawn. In the hallway, Mateo tells Johnny they need to do the test. According to him, the townspeople will burn the abbey to the ground if nothing gets done. Yet Johnny does not want to do the test, calling it godless. Infallible is the word Mateo prefers. As he sleeps, a scream awakens him. He leaves his room to see the bloodstained cloth nailed to his door. Soon, the boy from earlier visits him. He is Pater, warning the Inquisitor they must leave tonight. But Mateo is not so easily frightened. He assures Pater he will demonstrate tomorrow what is going on. However, the young boy says he overheard that the abbot intends to harm him. Such an intention cannot be ignored, because he is a dangerous man with an abundance of power. Mateho, though, already knows that, and isn't afraid. Once dawn arrives, we see the Inquisitor with the girl inside the cell. He places her inside a barrel full of water. His words to her are that she understands what she has to do. In this test, she has to look at the cross and breathe from either of the openings there. In doing so, she will accept God, in addition to being proven innocent. So he submerges the girl in the water to lock the top, which forms to resemble a cross. She stays in there for a while without doing what Mateho expected her to do. Her uncooperative struggle prompts him to urge her that she should stick her head through the opening to breathe. Though much to his dismay, the girl, for whatever reason, is not doing it. Dissatisfied, Mateho uses the keys to unlock the top and free the girl. He wants her to breathe, but the poor girl doesn't. Seeing that, the abbot thanks him for saving them the trouble of eliminating her. Mateho says she chose lifelessness over suffering. The abbot wears a smile the whole time to oppose the Inquisitor's frown. With the girl gone, they place her back in the barrel. After this horrible occurrence, the abbot says Mateho must leave. He wants Felix to do the same for betraying him by calling Mateho there. They then hear someone yelling for help. We see one of the monks trying to escape from something in fear. He gets visions of some women screaming while being covered in blood. As he crawls on the floor, he keeps telling himself it's not real. He soon splashes some water on his face, 
which seems to subside the images. However, the horror never left, it returns in the form of grotesque hands grabbing him. The monk gives off a suffering scream for everyone to hear. When they all come to him, the man no longer has eyes. According to the abbot, that was the witch's last act. Later, the monks arrive elsewhere to observe a murdered pater. Is this more of her doing? The abbot says it cannot be. Felix observes that his wounds are the same as Francisco's. They wonder who could have done it, and come to believe it is their guest. Matejo agrees there is a culprit among them, so he tries to reason who it could be. Asking Felix about the last time he saw the boy, he replies that they prayed together during sundown. Following this, Matejo starts asking all of them if any of them saw Pater after sundown. None of them did, except for the prior. It was almost dawn when the boy was in Matejo's room. The abbot asks if anyone can confirm this. Upon asking Johnny, he has no choice but to say the truth. Matejo does not deny it. Afterward, the prior holds out his book with the cloth to ask what it is. Matejo tells them it's part of his investigation. After Felix mentions that the symbol is from Francisco's body, their guest has to remind them he arrived after the first murder. Yet the prior says the newcomer is obsessed with that symbol, as he shows them the many sketches of it inside his book. That does not bode well for our protagonist. This leads the abbot to exclaim that the witch summoned him there, and he has done her bidding from the start. At that point, there is nothing left to do from his standpoint, except to give the order that Matejo be taken to the cell. So he gets knocked out, only to awaken in the cage with his wrists and chains. As he tries to set himself free, something bizarre starts taking place. The girl begins to emerge from the barrel behind him. He turns around to witness the strangeness. The man cannot believe it, as the girl who was supposed to be lifeless is now walking toward him. She asks if he remembers what happened. All he can say is that she lost her life. Supposedly, that is not the answer she wants to hear, because she just repeats her words. She also asks him to help her again, but he cannot let go of his puzzlement. She insists that he must remember something, or he will suffer. Then she goes to the corner, where it looks like she starts transforming. Matejo yells out to the sleeping Johnny to wake him. Soon, the girl crawls to him in a grotesque form. Johnny, standing awake now, is ordered by the girl to look at her. Once he does, he perceives her normally. His friend urges Johnny not to look at her, yet he cannot look away. Under her spell, the big man points his sword toward himself. It forces Matejo to yell out for the girl to stop this madness, while also telling her he cannot remember what she wants him to. Though she doesn't listen to him, soon enough, Johnny goes through with the unfortunate act. His final words to his friend are that someone is waiting for him. After the witch turns to the Inquisitor, all he can do is ask her why. She seductively tells him to come and find her. After that, she uses her powers to undo the lock on the cage. Matejo looks at Johnny. There is only one thing he can do, mourn for his friend, who probably knew him better than anyone else. The next scene has the prior engaging in penance again. Someone beside his door interrupts his practice, making the monk ask who it is. The door slowly opens, for us to briefly see the witch on the floor. Getting into the room with him, she gives him something much more than penance. Back in the cell, the abbot is there to ask Matejo what happened. The man, however, can't explain. He is told that his ignorance has brought the demise of several of their brothers. With everything that took place, the Inquisitor, who arrived with a skeptical mind, now says he believes the abbot. Shortly after, Felix arrives to inform them that something has happened to the prior. Entering his room, they find him lifeless. The abbot is affected the most by this disaster. When Matejo stands with Felix in the hallway, someone calls out to the latter. It is a lifeless pater, that only Felix perceives. Soon, a monk comes running in fear. He is Eduardo, informing the duo that another monk took his that makes Matejo say they can't trust their eyes now. Following this, the abbot oddly passes them without saying a word. He may have been taken by the witch's control. Overcome with dread, Felix and Eduardo decide to leave the building, but Matejo says he will stay there. He believes he was called there for a reason. His decision affects Felix, who now also decides to stay. He is another man of courage. With both of them staying, Eduardo chooses to stay too. So the group starts traversing the labyrinth, each holding a torch. As they walk, a voice that sounds like the abbot's menacingly tells them they are outmatched. Their torches all go out in unison, causing them to struggle in the dark. Matejo manages to light a torch, yet the witch is there to deliver more fear. It causes him to lie on the floor, while his companions seem to flee. Calling out to them does not get him an answer, though he soon hears a scream. The man then finds Felix wounded on the floor. He tells Matejo he was told to go to the dungeon. That confuses the Inquisitor, because he says there's nothing down there. To check if he's truly talking to Felix, he asks him where they first met. Once the monk says it was in the sanctum, Matejo knows it's wrong and Felix turns into the witch. She has power over him, making him immobile. Thankfully, the real Felix arrives to rescue him by covering his eyes. He tells his friend not to look at her as he takes him away. In the next scene, we see a monk hiding who keeps hearing voices. Out of fear, he comes out to take the life of the monk who lost his eyes, not knowing it was him. Matejo arrives to witness the savage act. By the possession of the witch, that monk takes his- Matejo runs elsewhere a place where he is soon approached by a cautious Felix. He holds a knife outward, asking our protagonist if he is real. 
He also plays it smart, by saying to not let his appearance fool him. Mateho responds that neither should his own appearance. We should recall that those words are the same ones they told each other closely upon first meeting, though they are in reverse. With such a personal exchange, they both learn they are not illusions. Felix wants to know what they should do at this point. The man starts walking toward the cruciform. The slow choral music that plays while he walks seems to indicate he is undergoing a change of mind about God. So he kneels before the cross in a climactic moment of acceptance, and Felix mimics him to his left. Everything that Mateho experienced since he arrived there has shifted him in the proper direction. In doing so, he arrives at an answer, that they should go into the sanctum. When Felix tells him he never told him where it is, Mateho responds that he didn't have to. The understanding is now with him. Afterward, the duo make progress traversing through the labyrinth, until they come to a room where they see the abbot has bound the witch. Seeing them, the head monk says they will burn her. So the two monks with him each take a torch to do that. Then the abbot puts on a red hood, which makes Mateho see an image of being a boy again. It looks like he gains an understanding from the images he sees. In that very room, he witnessed something take place, as he was hiding. We also learn what the special symbol he kept seeing truly is. It is three swords placed in a wooden holding, that is mounted on the wall. The girl saw the boy at that time, asking him to help her. At that moment, he returns to the present, to say he finally remembers. That's what the witch wanted him to remember. As the abbot is about to enter, Mateo comes up behind him with one of the swords from that wall. He demands that he put his dagger down. After the abbot does, Mateho removes his hood and informs the monks there that he has something to confess to them. But he just says something Mateho doesn't want to hear. He explains that he was in this room 20 years ago. To that, the abbot yells that he does only what he must do. He broke his vows to God, Mateho accuses. The abbot professes obnoxiously that all women are destined to serve the devil. The inquisitor holds him, while the monks release the girl. He says that the abbot took Peter's life to turn everyone against him. He also says that he deserves to lose his life. However, God will decide his punishment, not agreeing with his mercy. The girl demands that he brings the abbot to justice. She adds that he destroyed her soul. She was an innocent girl who got damned. Yet Mateo yells that he will not commit murder for her. Since that is the case, she takes vengeance into her own hands. The witch hugs him, and they start burning together. While they do, she tells Mateo he could have saved her. With the evil now destroyed, we later see a peaceful time. Mateo is organizing the burials with Felix's help. After our protagonist says it will take some time for him to sort out his place in the world, Felix lets him know he will always be welcome there. He adds that God sent him to them. But Felix wrote the letter, Mateo tells him. So the abbey is in good hands. As he starts leaving, the townspeople stand before him. They are accepting of the man now, allowing him to pass. Unfortunately, we observe that evil is always present. In a house, a girl gets struck by a man for an unknown reason. The poor girl lies down to touch the special symbol nearby her. It appears to be another call for help. 